Let's do this Charlie Kirk thing. I've actually been kind of wanting to, to weigh in on this. Like, what people need to, to realize is these right-wingers say intentionally provocative things for left-wing shows to mock them, and then they say, oh, how hysterical you're being. Uh, we don't actually dabble in anti-Semitism, please. But what's notable to me about this is not just, like, how anti-Semitic Charlie Kirk is being here, but how wrong he is just, like, culturally and artistically about Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Let's just let this guy who, you know, is the, the, the college student whisperer, I've been told. Who was paid not to go to college by uh, billionaires. Yep. And uh, also focused all of his attention on turning college students Republican in Arizona in the last election cycle. And that was basically a sweep for Democrats. So uh, keep doing your work, Charlie. Keep aging out, Charlie. Yep. And keep getting rich from donors that are trying to to get you to just finally give them some return on their investment. The ones that haven't died from COVID. Yep. Yep. Keep it up, buddy. And then... uh, but, but I would say don't become like a TV critic because his sensibilities are a little bit warped. Man, he's really lost his fastball. That's Larry David, who used to be a really funny guy. People would ask, you know, Charlie, right, you pause for a second. Your this is in, I guess that was in response to uh, him saying Trump was a maniac. Larry David. Okay. So try, do, Yeah, he did an interview uh, recently where he was just like, he's crazy. He's, he's deranged, sociopath. right? Yeah. He's, he's a sociopath. He lost the election. He can't take it. And he's dragging the country down. Just normal, legitimately yeah. accurate stuff about Donald Trump. Here we go. Man, he's really lost his fastball. That's Larry David, who used to be a really funny guy. People would ask, you know, Charlie, do you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm? I never liked Larry David. He is not the brains of the operation of Seinfeld. It was obviously Jerry or somebody else. <laughs> He's a baby. He's sick. Larry David, you perfectly just showed us exactly what is going on tonight at this New York fundraiser. These are, this is the Upper East crew. Tonight, around 4 or 5 p.m., you might as well just close down the streets. There will be a parade of these miserable Upper East Side zealots that have a lot of money. The lords of easy money, connected to Wall Street, hedge fund, titans of all sorts of industry. And they're just gonna go right down a cabal, if Park you Avenue. Will. They're gonna go right down Fifth Avenue to the New York City Radio Hall to have in their own mind a religious experience. What Tonight religion? is essentially Group therapy. Tonight is essentially $100,000, $250,000 for group therapy. Be among the other mentally deranged people in New York that live very shallow lives. You know what's really interesting is it's obvious that ever since Donald Trump came on the scene, Larry David is not as happy of a person as he once was. He's really never been that happy. I I think he's an atheist. That's his whole thing. He's your typical kind of... I don't New know if there's York been a Woody Allen type that is Wait, wait, hold on, go back for a sec. He, he goes, this is, again, we're, I mean, he's doing this on purpose. When he says Upper East Side z- zealots, okay. What does that mean? I mean, I think he got, he doesn't really know New York very well because he said, what, the New York City Radio Hall and the Upper yeah. East Side? Bro, yeah, that's what it's called, buddy. Bro, your anti-Semitic stereotypes are a little off. You're supposed to say Upper West Side and then all of those neo-Nazis know what you're talking about, buddy. <laughs> Um, but there he compares him to Woody Allen. How original. Just go back 10 seconds. Happy of a person as he once was. He's really never been that happy. I I think he's an atheist. He's snarky. He's your typical kind of New York Woody Allen type that is constantly complaining and is, you know, thinks he could be really funny. By the way, that that clip, he's a baby. He's sick. He's sick. Use some different words, man. You, you wrote Seinfeld. Okay. You're you're talking. All right, we got it, whatever. Um, you're sick. I am... He, we know he's trying to goad people into commenting on how he's an anti-Semite. All of the, that stuff was clearly designed to appeal to the, you know, mouth-breathing neo-Nazis that might be watching his program. Um, and when he compares him to Woody Allen, a complaining type like that. Uh, what's the word? What's the word? I can't, I can't think of it. Um, 
it's almost like a religious experience. It's like going to temple at the Radio City at New York, New York City, City Radio, Radio Hall. Hall coming down from the Upper East Side. Oh, you've got it. Put this that record on the phonograph. Um, so this is what Larry said. But I just got to say, like, I'm way more offended that he thinks that Jerry is the brains behind the operation of Seinfeld. You know, the good thing for for Charlie's case here is that Larry Davis just not, not done anything funny since Seinfeld. He's been responsible for that terrible movie, B movie. And then that's uh, that's all. Oh, wait, that was Jerry. Um, Larry's actually Larry done did, Curb did. since then, which is sorry to tell people way funnier than seinfeld didn't, didn't, way way better and funnier than didn't seinfeld. larry do that web series where he um uh fetishizes all of his his, his old uh, his old expensive cars and just like complains with other older comedians being like you gotta be funny yeah you gotta have a punchline right. you gotta be funny as he's holding like a takeout coffee cup for 25 minutes oh wait that was sorry probably wrong guy, sorry right, that was right. jerry right 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 yeah so we need to talk about Oh, what's this we got here? This is the clip. This is pretty funny. I mean, Larry, even in this, he's still more relevant than Jerry Seinfeld holding up machine guns or posing next to IDF soldiers could ever imagine to be. We're talking about gay French princes. Remember yeah. that joke? I'm going to say over a half a billion dollars. To your father, Rouse. okay? None of your f business. How about that? Larry David wasn't afraid to clap back when. That was, this, is like, this is maybe a Hollywood yeah, reporting like, news. Um, it might be, a, you might just be able to go through it, but, but yeah, uh, we'll find that Larry thing. I mean, I, I, I just, I, I think Curb is way funnier than, than Seinfeld ever was. Um, I think it's more culturally, culturally relevant. I think they're upset that it still is so culturally relevant and that Curb has been on, um, HBO and they've basically given Larry a blank check to do whatever he wants and keep seasons going and yeah, that the I'll final season in particular is more political. I yeah. haven't seen Curb in years, but it is funnier than Seinfeld, that's for sure. Um, um, yeah. I yeah. Know. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm a Larry fan too, because he's near and dear to my heart as a, uh, as a someone who goes on New York sports radio and talks about the Rangers and Knicks. So like, again, it's hard for, and has great takes. So it's hard for me not to, to, to love him so much, but uh, this is what he had to say about Trump that outraged Charlie. So how much has the whole 2020 election and everything that has flowed from it pissed you off? Oh, I mean, you can't go a day without thinking about what he's done to this country because he's such a little baby <laughs> that he's thrown 250 years of democracy out the window by not accepting the results of an I mean it's it's so crazy he's such a sociopath he's so insane he just couldn't admit to losing and we know he lost he knows he lost and look how he he's fooled everybody he's convinced all these people that he didn't lose it's he's a such a sick man he's so sick anyway no it hasn't impacted me at all <laughs> <laughs> i just like that he's uh he, he's on point about that and um and yeah the, that apparently triggered, triggered Charlie, Charlie. is useful. I mean, Bill Montgomery, a marketing billionaire, millionaire, uh, paid him, said, hey, don't go to college. Let me pay you to become a propagandist. So like that, when he talks about like your passive income, I mean, you know, you got a pretty like you have to talk this shit um, uh, because of who pays you, uh, Charlie. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, the irony giant says, isn't Jerry one of those Woody Allen types, actually? Pretty sure he's into little girls. <laughs> That's another thing. <laughs> Look up Jerry Seinfeld high school girlfriend, if anyone wants to do that. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld prom. Jerry Seinfeld at a height of fame, picking up his girlfriend from chemistry class. It's also funny. Look, look I'm not a Woody Allen defender by any sense of imag imagination, um, but before I knew a his personal life uh some funny movies so like the idea that these guys aren't funny like actually maybe it's not even seinfeld maybe there's even a a, a, a third person responsible for seinfeld that isn't jewish i think is the implication that right, uh, right. is there like jewish people are pretty funny um uh it, it, they, they make funny stuff you can admit that uh charlie yeah yeah 
uh, but apparently he can't. Yeah, he's he's one of those Adams. He's one of those Adam Sandler types, just completely unfunny, just not <laughs> nothing going for him. <laughs> God, the Water Boy was on TV the other day, and I will admit that I watched like forty five minutes of it. There are like seven or eight Adam Sandler movies from like nineteen ninety eight to two thousand and five. They'll watch in their entirety. <laughs> they come on cable. It, it, it very much is is str- is straight male yeah, religion. It's like, it's, so it's, it's I would really... I would hope that you all have seen. I mean that and and the Chappelle Show. Okay, yeah, oh, straight yeah. men religion. Of a certain age. Still trying to get an apartment like in Big Daddy. Yeah. (laughs) Um, All right. Uh, Genocide Judy says if you. Oh, God. I didn't. Okay. Um, if you love Larry David now, we'll just wait till you see the episode of Curb where he falls in love with Palestinian food. Yeah, I saw some discourse on that basically saying, like, look at him being dismissive of, of the Palestinian cause in this context, but like. That's the point of Larry's character is he's an asshole. So, I, I mean, it. I don't think it's aged well in the sense that it still presents it as this, like, symmetrical conflict between Palestinians and Jewish people. But it, it's far from, the, like, I've seen Homeland. I've seen 24. I mean, we've had some real, really horrific depictions of Arab people in this country. And in the end, it's because Larry feels guilty because he loves the chicken at the Palestinian he loves, restaurant. But also, so but also he, the, the, what it's also making clear is that, like, it's showing sort of the calcified, like, stale uh, position of Funkhauser who, like, refuses to go into the restaurant and they, um, you know, rip off his rip off his yarmulke to the to the cheers of the, the Palestinians yeah. in the restaurant. Like, it's very clearly over-the-top satirical humor. So they're almost like, if someone says that is like, oh, that's a really, like, big, like, that's a really, like, unfunny, inappropriate thing. I'm like, I don't, I feel like you're not getting what Larry David was actually trying to achieve in that context. And also, Larry's other thing besides the chicken is he wants to sleep with the the hot lady at the at the chicken place yes that's like true. like it's also showing his like depravity and I selfishness forgot, regarding i don't love the per- portrayal of her i forgot about that part but this is this is where i will redeem larry i'll give this quote about bernie sanders in 2020 i would say i would beg him to drop out so i don't have to keep flying in from los angeles to do snl i thought when he had a heart attack that that would be it i wouldn't have to have to fly in from los angeles but you know he's indestructible nothing stops that man if he wins do you know what that's going to do to my life? Do you have any idea? I mean, it will be great for the country. Great for the country. Terrible for me. So, Larry, he's all right. Charlie, not so much. You know what is a funny episode treatment of uh, Israel Palestine is the gang goes jihad. Uh, always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> they, uh, th- they're. That's some very funny plot points in that. They're, they're, they're great. Um, over there, talk about people. Basically, that... an Israeli guy uh, decides that he owns part of the. Uh, yes. <laughs> part oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, I should rewatch that. The guy, the guy, wa- the guy walks in and he's like, "You have to move next door." And Charlie's like, "What? What do you mean we have to move next door?" <laughs> That's really good. That's really good.